Welcome to the podcast about venture capital, where investors and founders alike can learn how VCs make decisions and reach conviction. Your host is Nick Moran, and this is The Full Ratchet. Welcome back to TFR for another edition of Investor Stories. On this segment, the experts talk about a startup that failed and the causes of that failure. Here's the segment called Postmortems. On today's special segment, we have Jonathan Tsu of Tribe Capital. Jonathan, can you tell us a story about a portfolio company that failed and why it failed? Uh, yeah, you know, we uh, we were we led the Series B of Sprig at uh, Social Capital. Uh, my partner Ted uh, uh, led that deal, and we all we all worked on it together. Um, and that company ended up, um, you know, going out of business, and that that was a, a tough one for us. I think, you know, we we learned a lot through it. In the end of the day, it was, um, you know, it was a situation. Sprig was trying to do like uh, food delivered to your home, yep, and really full stack. So they cooked the food, they developed the recipes and they paid the delivery people and they delivered it to you, so on and so forth. And what we didn't foresee sort of when we had initially made the investment was that the competition for drivers, specifically in San Francisco, was going to get so heated, primarily due to Uber and Lyft fighting over drivers, right? That it was going to drive the economics of our drivers really, really, really upside down. And that would in turn, you know, make the economics of the whole enterprise pretty upside down. And so there was sort of a sensitivity there that we didn't fully appreciate and that we that we didn't see. And I think it's one of those examples of like, you know, from a quantification point of view, we actually had it all fairly well quantified. You know, we understood, we had a, a decent analytical understanding of what Sprig was, but looking into the future, we failed to see how one of those variables could really go against us and how, and maybe also how sensitive, you know, the model was to that variable. On today's special segment, we have Janet Bannister of Real Ventures. Janet, can you tell us a story about a portfolio company that failed and why it failed? Yeah, I mean, I guess one that failed, I mean, it ended up having an exit, but it did not do as well as we had hoped. Uh, again, sticking with this marketplace theme, uh, I would say Virage Sale. So it's like rhymes with garage sale, but it's Virage Sale. And it's uh, it was a marketplace. And I think that the challenge with that company is it raised too much money too quickly. And, you know, that's something that we always warn our startups against is that when people think, when startup founders think, oh, this is awesome. I've just been offered this amazing term sheet with terms that I can't refuse. It's not always, it's not always for the best. And again, I can talk more about that if you want. But. So in this instance, they weren't able to keep up with the growth expectations and raise that another double the previous valuation? Or? That, that's right. The challenge becomes suddenly the expectations on that company are incredibly high. And if you do not have the fundamentals, if you're not ready to really pour um, gas on the fire, if you don't know exactly the knobs that you're going to pu push, then you've got to spend that money very quickly. And often you have to spend the money before you are confident that the money is going to get the return that you need. Right. And so what can quickly happen is if you don't get that return right out of the gate, then very quickly you're like, oh my goodness, we're quickly burning through this money and there's no way we're going to be able to raise at a higher valuation or maybe even not even a flat valuation to what we raised last time. On today's special segment, we have Avichal Garg of Electric Capital. Avichal, can you tell us a story about a portfolio company that failed and why it failed? Oh, that's an interesting one. I don't want to blow their cover, but I'll, I'll give you the characteristics of, of who the company is. It was a, a business that was essentially um, is backed by amazing, amazing investors, tier, you know, the, basically the best VC. And um, they were doing some stuff around uh, making it really, really easy to manage your home and essentially outsource that. Um, and um, and for busy, you know, professionals, that's that's awesome, right? Like, you need to clean your gutters before it starts raining, and you're just like, oh, I need to like find a gutter guy, and I need to, you know, do that. It's just like it's a lot of work. And so, wouldn't it be great if there was an app that you could have, and you push a button, and you're like, Hey, I need somebody to clean my gutters, and they figure it out. And uh, great idea. And they were doing quite well. Um, and then COVID hit, and that had uh, a couple of you know pretty fundamental changes for them. 
So one was, of course, that you know, a bunch of people stopped having as much money. Um, another was that people started working from home. And so uh, one of the kind of funny side effects of that was everybody started investing in their home, but they were around all the time. So they actually do some of these things. And so I don't know if you've seen like the, the e-commerce or purchase data, but like, you know, Lowe's and Home Depot and these guys are doing well, actually. Uh, it's actually up year over year because everybody's going to these places and they're like, oh yeah, I like always wanted to like fix this thing in my house. And now that I'm home all day, it really bugs me. So I'm just going to go fix it. Um, and so it turns out you kind of don't want you know, to outsource it because you're home all day and you can just fix it yourself. And, and, and you kind of don't want people coming over in the era of COVID. So it's not like you want random plumbers and electricians and people kind of coming in and in your house all, all, all the time if there's COVID happening. Um, and so that just sort of decimated the business. It just all of a sudden, like the world changed in this like really unfortunate way where the business was was doing well. And like, it just on the other side of it, there's like just, you know, if it was a three month blip, it would have been fine. But like a nine month blip, potentially looking like a 12 or 16 month you know, headwind is just sort of kills the business. On this special segment, we have Simeon Hiagwam of Nomus Ventures. Simeon, can you tell us a story about a portfolio company that failed and why it failed? So I have, I have one that has since dissolved. Um, they were in the, so it was, they built a collaboration tool for teams. Um, essentially, you can record a conversation, a uh, team meeting or interview, and then it has an online platform that basically transcribes the entire conversation and allows sort of the team leader to, you can A, listen to a certain portion of the transcription if you wanted to. And then you can also take a piece of the transcription and send an email for actionable items. Um, definitely helped collaboration. This was early stage, so this was pre-seed. Um, they had sh- strong traction as far as they had pilots with the likes of a New York Times and Frog. So big corporations. They also had strong team. Founders had amazing backgrounds, um, engineering, strong engineering backgrounds, and they hired strong engineers as well. They also had amazing business backgrounds as well. And then they also had advisors. So they had advisors from Google and so forth. So when you talk about on the surface level, they had they had a strong team. They had a strong situation to take it to the next level, um, and they were turning those pilots into revenue opportunities. And so that was a, a a big indication factor when you talk about traction. Ultimately, the entire industry is facing the same problem that they face. And so even when you think about Siri, when you talk about if an individual on that team has a heavy accent or an accent that transcription is coming up like foreign language. Even if Siri, I had a heavy accent, foreign accent, and I try to talk to Siri and say, call somebody or call Nick, uh, Siri might not understand. So the whole industry is facing this problem. And then what you're having is they decided that in order for them to move forward, they wanted to think about a full solution rather than putting a Band-Aid on it. And so they decided to take a step back and realizing that the entire industry is facing this problem. So the founders decided to do some soul searching and realize and figure out within themselves if this is the path that they wanted to take rather than continuing to burn um, investors' money. And so I, I can respect that. Uh, I can respect when a founder says, because it's hard, because several founders, you hear the story of a founder that doesn't want to stop and doesn't see the signs, um, but wants to continue going and ends up burning a lot of cash. But I respect these founders for taking a step back and realizing that they're going to have to keep trying to put a Band-Aid on the issue that the entire industry is facing. And so, yeah, but but what I will say in that is I got one of my best learnings from that as well. And number one, I wasn't expecting, definitely was never expecting to bat a thousand on all the investments. Honestly, that won't ever happen in my case. This is venture. Um, this is venture, exactly. And so, but what it allowed me to learn is as I came across companies in that space down the road, I was able to talk and, ad- and advise them on things that they were going to see down the road. So that has helped me be a better investor. And now you're talking about other situations, right? You're talking about situations now where people are trying to use AI and machine learning for facial recognition. So again, now we're talking about something else where I'm more educated to understand what they're trying to do and understand some of the implications that come with that. 
and some of the risks that they're going to encounter down the road. Uh, so I've appreciated that opportunity to, to invest in that company, to see them ultimately to the point where they dissolve. That will conclude this installment of Investor Stories. If you're enjoying the program and would like to see it continue, take a moment and leave a five-star review in iTunes. Also, if you'd like updates on new content from TFR, as well as the top 10 VC articles every week, go to fullratchet.net and sign up for the newsletter. Okay, that will wrap things up for today. Until next time, over-prepare, choose carefully, and invest confidently. Thanks for joining me.